Well, first of all, um, when I started this adventure in June, I had the objective of maybe having a couple of hundreds of followers within half a year. And actually, since June, I think next week, we'll, um, we'll hit a thousand subs. So um, I'm proud and thank you very much. And what I want to do more and more is, is listening to your questions. And one of the questions that is asked most, I think, is there is this beautiful effects on, in this case, the CSAD, what are you using? So in this episode, I want to explain to you um, which effects I'm using. Uh, and you saw the title of this, um, of this episode, is a CS80 useless without effects? Well, let's first realize that since that have been made for the last 20 years, all have built-in effects. We're used to synthesizers um, that have reverbs and delays built in. We hardly hear synths without effects. Now, if you take the CS80 and you listen to it, without any effects, it can be pretty disappointing, I have to say. Uh, let's take the first two um, presets called strings. This is the way they sound. This is not really impressive. Um, it does get better if you take, for instance, the brass sound. That also has, has some oomph to it. But um, let's, for instance, compare it to the OB-8. Um, I prepared a little sound, also without effects, and listen to, uh, listen to this. It's broad, it's playful. The effect comes from the detuning of the, uh, of the oscillators, but also from the fact it's on the other side, that you can individually pan sounds or better said, oscillators. So listen to this. And it becomes this lush sound. And let's quickly hop over to the uh, Jupiter. Also there, without any effects, it already sounds pretty lush. that respect, it's not useless, obviously, but the Yamaha surely needs effects to really come, come alive. Um, so let's hop over. What I do use is not hardware effects. I'm not fully obsessed with hardware, don't worry. I, uh, I use plugins. And um, what you see here on the screen is the plugin of the Lexicon 2 to 4, which is from Universal Audio. And uh, the, I'm, I'm using the small hall with quite a long delay time, somewhere between, well, plus 20 seconds. And if I activate it for the, uh, for the CS80, see what happens. sound that, uh, that Vangelis is using, probably even longer delay times or reverb times, sorry, you can go up to 70 seconds, this is only 25 seconds. There's one more thing I want to tell about the Lexicon, um, which was actually introduced in 78, the C is 80 in 77, and it was 81, if I'm correct, that he produced Blade Runner. Let's, let's have a look again, you can actually go under the hood. And you see these two pitch shift buttons. And this is where it becomes interesting. Because what Lexicon does is once the reverb, you hear, hear the reverb tail and it modulates. And that is really something that adds to the sound. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll play a short sound so you can hear it. And it'll take a long delay time, uh, reverb time.
Excellent, excellent effect. So, the lexicon. Long reverb times between 20 to 35, 40 seconds from the lexicon and that pitch shifting effect at the end which creates the beautiful modulation. Next to that, I use a delay. Uh, I actually use the H delay. And uh, to be honest, I'm a sucker for ping pong. Ping pong means that it sort of moves from left to right. Um, and if you add it, the sound becomes even bigger. Now it depends on what preset I use, whether I can do a lot of this ping pong stuff. Because for instance, if I take this... You know, the delay drives you crazy. So here I sort of turn it down to this, a little less feedback. So, H delay and lexicon is what I use. Now, as a small experiment, I said that the Oberheim and the, um, and the Roland can live with a little, um, little less effects. Well, see what happens if I add effects to them as well. I think it gives you a good impression of uh, the effects I'm using and the effect it has on the instruments. Uh, see you next time with a new cover.